Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, um, we're going to be going over some of the more difficult logical puzzle questions. I had a couple of people send me in some questions, um, which have been really helpful. So then I know what kind of questions you guys would like to go through um, and what you would find helpful if I did. Okay, so this is the first one. So this is one of those classic ones where it tells you know, it gives you different ages and people always get really confused by them. But I think these are really nice to do. In fact, these are probably easier to do than the two way tables, because obviously with the two way table, we have a method. But even with the method, it can take us some time. OK, so it says when Brian was five years old, Joshua was still two. So what we have to do here is the whole idea is we have to make relations between people in terms of their ages. So that means to go from Joshua to Brian, it's plus three. OK. Then it says four years ago, Michael was 15 and three years younger than Hamza. So that means to go from Michael to Hamza, it's plus three. Make sense? Then it says in a few years from now, Joshua will be 27 and Hamza will be 29. So to go from Joshua to Hamza, it's going to be plus two. So I don't know if you guys can see this. And then you kind of just have to fit these ideas in. So J... So based on the idea that J to H is plus two, and we know that J to B is plus three... H to B must be plus 1. Does that make sense? And then since M to H is plus 3, and we know J to H is plus 2, then M to J must be plus 1. Okay, so that might be a little bit tricky for you guys to think about. But if you just maybe perhaps just pause and understand that all I'm doing is I've taken these three separate facts and just, and just tried to kind of um, stick them together almost like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay, so from that, we know that Michael, um, so we know that Joshua is one year older than Michael. We know that Hamza is two years older than Joshua. And we know that Brian is one year older than Hamza. Okay, so how old is Brian 10 years ago? So it says four years ago, Michael was 15. So that means right now, Michael's 19. So 10 years ago, Michael was nine. So how old was Brian? So plus one for Joshua is 10. Plus two is 12. Plus one is 13. Brian was 13 years ago. Like I said, dead, dead simple question. Really, really easy to do. But it's just about understanding. OK, and I think often with the logical puzzles where there isn't like no immediate method, right? Like when it's not a non two way table question or like when the method doesn't scream out at you, you kind of have to be logical with the information. You have to ask yourself. So why have they given us a fact like this? Because if you think about it, this is kind of an irrelevant fact. because It says in a few years from now, Joshua will be 27 and Hamza will be 29. That, that's useless if you don't know how many years in the future it is. Right. So you have to think about, OK, why have they given us that? Oh, they've given it to us so you can relate between John, Joshua and Hamza, and then kind of figure out that that's what they've been trying to do all along and kind of put it together. But once again, experience, experience is kind of a big thing that comes, um, comes with these questions, but I hope that makes sense. Okay, so on to this question. So this question is a proper mean one. Um, and I think that people hate these kind of questions. But once again, there is a way to be doing them. Um, and we can definitely, definitely make it uh, a lot more simple than what it is. Okay, so these are the ones where there's like a bunch of shapes and it says in which turn and point will the circle and square be overlapping for the first time okay so a couple of things to think about so what i like to do is i like to number the points let's say one to ten so we'll start here the reason why it goes to ten is because there's ten points so we're starting there and we're kind of going clockwise to the ten okay it will all make sense in a, in a second so it says the initial location of a circle and a square on the points of a star is shown on the diagram below every turn the circle and square move to a different point okay in which turn and point will the circle and square be overlapping? So it says the circle moves three points in a clockwise direction. So it goes one, two, three. It tells us the square moves four points in a counterclockwise direction. Well, in order to do this question, you have to make sure that they're both going in the same direction. And you're probably wondering, how can you do that? The square is clearly going counterclockwise. Well, if you think about it, on a clock, going, let's say you start here, Starting here, going 90 degrees clockwise is the same as going 270 degrees anti-clockwise. OK, so for that reason, when it says the square moves four points in a counterclockwise direction, so that's one, two, three, four. That's the same as going one, two, three, four, five. Does that make sense? So the point here is, oh, sorry, I missed out a point. Give me one sec. So this is... Uh, one, two, three. Okay, and I'll change my pen color so you can see it more clearly. Um, maybe I'll just do black. And then 
So four points counterclockwise is one, two, three, four. Okay. But then that would be minus four because it's heading the wrong way. But the same way as saying going four points counterclockwise is one, two, three, four, five, six clockwise. Okay. So now you're probably wondering, well, great, we've got our points in clockwise and anti-clockwise, but where do we go from here? Okay, so let me explain. So remember, this is in point three right now, and this H is going to be point eight. So do you remember why I said you have to mark it from one to ten going clockwise? So if we take C, for example, C starts at position three. And we know, so this is C, and then I'm going to write in black that this is going to be H. H is in position eight. So we know that C goes... Um, starts in position three, and all that happens to it is it moves three points in a clockwise direction again, and it moves three points in a clockwise direction again. So all the, all that these numbers correspond to is remember it's just the individual points. Uh, it's just the points on the star. Okay, so this method might seem long, but obviously I'm I'm having to explain it, which is why it seems longer than it does. And all you have to do is you just keep adding the numbers on. So plus three to six, plus three to nine. But now you're probably wondering when you do plus three again, obviously we get to twelve. But then there's no 12 on here. But what you have to do is instead you have to keep going back round. So you go 1, 2, 3. So it goes back to 2. And then once again, it would go back to 5 and so on and so on and so on. Okay. So uh, let me just shorten this so I can fit more numbers in. So that's essentially the basis of what we're doing. So for each term, we're just adding on that plus 3. So it goes 6, 9, 2, 5, 8. And then we'd go back around to 1, for example. With H, we're doing the exact same thing. But of course, instead of adding only three, we have to add six this time. Remember, we said H goes around six, right? Plus six. So once again, we know we only go to 10. So therefore, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So we go to four again. We add another six, it goes to 10. Add another six, goes to six. Add another six, goes to two. Um, this will work if you take it slowly, step by step, and work your way through it. Add another 6, we get to 8. Add another 6, we get to 4. Okay? So, I mean, you can, you're can probably wondering, how can I do it so fast? Well, all I'm doing is it's like, so 6 plus 6 would technically be 12, but then I know that we get, don't go into the teens, so we just restart back at 1, so it goes to 2. And then 8 plus 6 is 14, but obviously I know that we don't go into the teens again because we stop at 10, so it goes back to the single digits. And now all you have to do is compare when they end up. In the same place. So you can see this is after one, two, three, four, five turns. And you know it's point H because eight corresponds to the H. Okay? So you can see this strategy is probably something that you, you guys may not have come across. And I didn't necessarily learn it from anywhere. I just kind of tried to figure out some kind of like method of doing it as such. I played around with it a little bit. It took me a while, but eventually I got there. OK, and this is the point. I want you guys to be thinking like this. So when you're reviewing questions, by the way, this is really important. When you're reviewing questions, it's not just, oh, let me read the answers. Oh, that's how they did it. Because often the way that Medify and some of these other kind of question banks, um, they answer questions isn't necessarily the most efficient way. They won't give you like a, a, a consistent way of doing it all the time. Does that make sense? Whereas if you can try and think about it, now you've got a method that you can take to the future that you should be able to use all the time. Okay, so with this question, this kind of looks like you can't use any of the methods that we previously taught. But this is actually kind of a two-way table in disguise because it says there's four people and they each have a different color car and it's parked in adjacent, they're parked adjacent to each other. So what you can actually do is we can just assign these values like one, two, three, and four. Okay, so let's look at the variables mentioned here. Um, I think the color is mentioned quite a few times. Um, the names are mentioned a few times. Also. So I think I'll probably put the names down the middle here. So J... K, A, and B, and the colors are B, O, S, and G, and one, two, three, and four. Okay, so um, let's go through the information. So the orange car is parked next to the black car, so we can kind of just say that these two are next to each other, and it says the orange car doesn't belong to Kevin. The owner of the green car has parked his car next to Ben's car, that means Ben's car isn't green, and also you can see, um, you can rule out some of the answers here. In case A is going to be wrong because of that. Kevin's car and Jamie's car are the only cars which have two cars parked either side of them, which means that they are going to be two and, uh, sorry, they're going to be two and three, and therefore A and B are going to be one and four. Does that make sense? Um, Adam's car is black. So Adam's car is black. 
okay, um, and is not parked next to the green car. Okay, so this is where we kind of have to kind of think about things a little bit. And this might be a bit of a weird concept, but it actually doesn't matter which side Adam's car is. Because you can see here, none of the answers refer to like Adam's car being on the very left or the very right, whatever, because it doesn't actually matter whether Adam's is on the very left or on the very right, because it, like the whole cars will just be flipped, if that makes sense. Like they could be in either order. So what we actually have to do is we have to take a step away from the table a little bit and we kind of just have to write out a scenario. So let's say Adam's is right, it is all the way on the left. Okay, that means Ben's is here. Okay, so Adam's car we know is black. And we know the black car lives next to the orange car because we wrote that in our diagram. But we know Adam's car is black, is not part next to the green car. Um, and we know Ben's can't be green. So this four, this one must be green and Ben's must be silver. Okay, so we can tick these. Um, okay, so it looks like this. Okay, from the information that we're given. So it means that if you think about it, Kevin's car and Jamie's car are the only cars that have two cars parked aside of them. And Adam's car is black and is not parked next to the green car. We know the orange car is parked next to the black car and doesn't belong to Kevin. So this one must belong to Kevin. Okay. And you can see, I mean, I already got that information from the table just by kind of using it, um, like filling in the info, which is why you can see the table is useful. But if Kevin belongs there, um, then the last person must be Jamie, whose car is here. So the point I'm trying to prove is, I guess you could have done it kind of like this way, but I think it's more intuitive to use a combination of the table and kind of putting putting them in, um, putting these kind of next to each other, okay? So from here, you can rule out a couple of things. Jamie's car is black, that's wrong. Adam's car is parked next to Kevin's car, is wrong. So you know it has to be D, and D makes sense because it says Kevin's car is green and is parked between Jamie and Ben's cars, okay? So once again, I'm here. I could have filled this one in. I guess this side of the table wasn't as important. It was just important for for us in terms of thinking about, okay, where can A and B belong and J and K belong, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Hope that makes sense. Okay, last question. I mean, this one isn't too bad. Um, It's just a bit of algebra, really. So the mean shoe size among group of eight friends is 6.25. Three friends are size five, one friend is size six, and another friend is size three. Out of the three remaining friends, Fiona has the largest shoe size, which is three sizes bigger than Katie's and one size bigger than Lucy's. What is Fiona's shoe size? So the mean shoe size is 6.25 times 8. Um, sorry, the mean is 6.25. So to find the total, it's going to be 6.25 times 8, which is going to be 50. Okay. Three friends are size 5. So let's subtract 15. One friend is size 6. So let's subtract 6. And another friend is size 3. So that gives us 26. That means three remaining people have a size have shoe sizes adding up to 26. It says out of the three remaining friends, Fiona has the largest shoe size, which is three sizes bigger than Katie's and one size bigger than Lucy's. So if we say that Fiona's is X, Katie's becomes X minus three and Lucy's becomes X minus one. So 26 equals X plus X minus three plus X minus one. So 26 equals three X minus four, 30 equals three X, 10 equals X. So what is Fiona's shoe size? D, 10. Okay, so I hope this video has been helpful. Um, yeah, just wanted to put it out there and just because I knew that um, some people were struggling with some of these logical puzzle questions and I thought it would be kind of good um, to be able to see them, especially because um, I did have, I think someone mentioned about doing the, the question before about the cordial points um, and moving along them. And so hopefully that was helpful too. In terms of um, looking to the future, one of the things that I might do is I might upload a Google Doc where you guys can post your questions. And then after a certain time, let's say a couple of days, I might do a live stream where I talk through each of the questions. Um, and so that would allow you guys to directly you know, bring forward the questions that you want. But the only thing with that um, is that I just want to know that if people are interested in something like that. So please do leave a comment below if that is something that you'd like to see. Um, and I would be more than happy to do it. But yeah, just let me know, essentially. That's what matters. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.